This is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make the Diamond Crochet Hat, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you will find both right and left-handed video tutorials, a link out to the written pattern, and links to all the supplies you need, as well as a link to the matching diamond crochet cowl. This pattern uses 150 to 200 yards of Red Heart Huga Charm, which is less than a full ball, and a USI 5.5 millimeter hook. This one happens to be by Laurel Hill. You'll also need the standard crochet tools of a tapestry or yarn needle and a pair of scissors. Additionally, you can use a snap on faux fur pom pom like I've got shown here, or add your own pom pom of choice, or skip it. It's up to you. This hat features two sizes teen adult small which is for a 20 to 22 inch head but does stretch a little bit more than that if you like your hats a little snugger as well as a adult large size which fits 22 to 24 inches like i say it's a very very stretchy hat there are also options to make it shorter for a more close beanie fit or have a little extra length for a little bit of slouch let's take a look at the finished hat okay here we have the teen or adult small and it's in the slouch length, which has just a little bit extra length to it. You can see here, I've got my faux fur snap on pom pom, which I have also linked out at the link in the description. I like this kind of pom pom because I can take it off and set this aside and then throw my hat in the wash. Of course, if you prefer, you can use a different kind of pom pom or no pom pom at all. That is totally optional. This hat is made from the top down. So like I say, for length, you can adjust it uh, to make it just the personal length for you as long as you need, which is another great feature of this hat. Like I said, it's got this great, super stretchy brim. So you can really make the size and the length and everything that's fit for you. Now you can see here are the diamond crochet cables that I'll be demonstrating for you here in a minute. And you can also see the great sparkle, hopefully, in this yarn. I really enjoy using it. If you wanted to make this hat without the sparkle, a great yarn substitution would be Red Heart Soft. Now let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to demonstrate how to make the teen or adult small size. This pattern begins with a magic circle. I have a separate tutorial, which is linked at the link in the description if you need a closer view of this. But basically, I wrap my finger, the yarn around my finger twice towards me, go under that first loop, grab that first one I actually made further back on the finger, pull it under, I make a little slip stitch to lock it down, and then I can start crocheting. I also like to start this pattern with a chainless starting double crochet. If you don't enjoy making this chainless starting double crochet or you struggle with it a little bit, you can use a chain two and then a double crochet or a chain three or whichever double crochet substitute you like. Again, I do have a separate tutorial for this stitch though if you need it. I pull my hook up to the height of a double crochet, yarn over with that loop after securing the top of it with my finger, go under the loop for the magic circle, pull up that loop through, yarn over, and pull through there, and yarn over, and pull through to finish off that stitch, like so. So that is a chainless starting double crochet, and it counts as the first double crochet of this round. Then I'm just going to work 11 more double crochets in that ring, and I wanna make sure that I go around the part that's still around my finger here, that's a complete circle, as well as the tail of the yarn, because that's what I'll pull on to close up this ring when I am finished with this round. I also want to note that to weave in your ends from a magic circle, a lot of people worry about it coming undone. When you weave in that end, you want to make sure to use your needle to go back and forth in both directions. Um, both the kind of the direction the yarn is pointing from underneath there from the inside of the hat, as well as back in the other direction. As long as you do that a few times with your end, I really find that they do stay put. So I'm just going to continue double crocheting in the ring here. Now that I've got a few stitches worked in there, I can probably pull my finger out, It'd be a lot easier. There we go. So the ring stays nice and open and flat. So, so far, including my chainless starting double crochet, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six made. So I've got six more double crochets to make and I will see you at the end of round one. Okay, so including that first chainless starting double crochet, I now have 12 double crochets worked into that circle. So what I can do is take my tail end here and just give it a tug. There we go. And you can see that closes up our circle nice and tight. And then I'm just going to join to finish this round here into the top of that chainless starting double crochet. If you used a chain three, you would join to the top of the chain three. And if you used a chain two and then double crocheted in the first stitch, you would join to the top of that double crochet, skipping the chain two and not counting it as a stitch. So there we have our first round. 
Now we're ready to begin round two. First, I'm going to again make a chainless starting double crochet because that's how I like to start most of the, well, I should say the even numbered rounds of this pattern, the ones that begin with basically double crochets. Again, you can use whichever substitute you prefer. But the goal for this round is to work two double crochets in each stitch around. So however, again, you want to make that first double crochet is up to you, but that's one. And then I wanna go back in that same first stitch, the one we joined to, to make a second double crochet. Then I can continue to work my way around making two double crochets in each stitch. At the end of this round, we will have 24 stitches total because we had 12 in the previous round and we're working two in each stitch of this round. So I will see you when we get to the end of round two. All right, so to begin round three, we're going to start with a chain one and we're going to work two single crochets right into that first stitch, the one we joined to. So there's one and then right back in that stitch for number two. Then we're going to put a front post double crochet around the next stitch. So we yarn over and go from front to back around that post, yarn over and pull up our loop, pull through two, pull through two. Then we're going to repeat that sequence of three stitches twice more. So two single crochets in the next stitch, one, two, then a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch, and then once more, we put two single crochets in the next stitch, one, two, followed by a front post double crochet around the next stitch. So as soon as we've made that third front post double crochet, we are going to put just one single crochet in the next stitch, and then follow that with two front post double crochets around the next stitch. So rather than having two single crochets and one front post double crochet, now we're going to have two, one single crochet and two front post double crochets. So we make the one single crochet, then we find that next post and go around it for the first one, just as we've been doing. And then if you haven't worked two post stitches into a stitch before, it's not very difficult. You just yarn over and go right underneath the first one you made and get around the post there. And if you need to, you can pull that loop up a little higher so it doesn't you know, get pulled down by being that just a little bit lower on the post and finish off the stitch. Then we're going to start that whole series over again. We find the next stitch, work two single crochets there, one, two, followed by a front post around, double crochet around the next stitch, like so, then again, for the second time, two single crochets in the next stitch, followed by a front post, double crochet around the next. Then for a third time, two single crochets in the next stitch, and a front post double crochet around the next stitch, like so. And then since that's our third one there, we've got, if we look back here, we've got two in this one, so we've got one, two, three again, so now we know it's time for just one single crochet in this stitch, followed by two front post double crochets around the next. So there's one and two. So to finish off round three, we're going to do that whole sequence one more time, and that will take us right back to that first single crochet we made. So since you've seen me do it twice, repeat it one more time. Remember two, one, two, one, two, one, then one, two. So I will see you at the end of round three. Okay, so at the end of round three, you should have worked two front post double crochets around that very last stitch so that you're ready to join to the first single crochet. You might have to kind of wiggle it over here to see it, but you want to join to the top of that first single crochet you made. Whoops, there we go, like so. And that is the end of round three, and you should have 36 stitches total. Round four is going to be simply double crochet again. So again, I like to start with a chainless starting double crochet, but you can use whichever method you prefer. And that goes right in that, oops, right in that very first stitch. Let me get that hook turned around. There we go. Pull that through and finish the chainless starting double crochet. There we go. Then I am going to work another double crochet right back in that stitch again, like so. And then I'm going to double crochet in the next two stitches. So one 
and one. Oops, there we go. All right, then I am going to begin the repeat that takes me all the rest of the way around, which really is identical to this one. Two double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next two. So that is our simple repeat around. Two double crochet here in the next stitch, one and two, and then double crochet in the next two stitches. One, did I skip one there? I did, whoops, let's pull that back out. There we go, one in that stitch, and one in the next. So again, another reason it's important to count your stitches. So I'll just keep repeating that, two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around. So at the end of round four, I will have 48 stitches. So I will see you at the end of round four. Okay, so to begin round five, we're going to start with a chain one, and then I'm going to single crochet in the very first stitch, the same one we joined to. Then I want to work a front post treble crochet around the last post stitch two rows below. So that sounds like a lot, but let's take it together. Now the previous round, of course, was all double crochets. So the post stitches were made in the previous round, and we finished off that round with two post stitches worked into the same stitch, if you may remember that there. So it's that second one of that pair of post stitches that we want to work around now. So to make a front post treble, I need to yarn over twice, then again, find that post, go around it from front to back, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. It's a tall stitch, so it's okay to take your time working it off. Now, one other note, in that previous round where we made post stitches, when we work a post stitch around a stitch, generally that stitch is then considered worked, so we don't work into it again. However, in this round, round five, we're going to be working into the stitches that also have post stitches worked around them, um, because we're still increasing, and that's just a way to sneak in some more increases on this round. That's why you generally don't work into the stitch behind the post stitch, because it would be an increase, but that's what we want. So, after making that front post treble crochet, we need to work a single crochet in the next three stitches of the previous round, so that's our double crochet round, without skipping any behind the post stitch. So let's go ahead and just pull that forward, and we can see the top of the stitch here, that would be the next stitch. So we just go right in there for one, two, and three. So we've got three single crochets there in our next three stitches, like so. So, and after that, we are going to front post treble crochet around the next post stitch that's two rows below. So we yarn over twice again, and we just find the very next one. That was the first one we worked into, so what's the next one that comes up? It's this one right here. This time it's pretty much right below us. So we go around that post and just work off our front post treble crochet, like so. Then we're going to start that repeat over again, starting with a single crochet in the next three stitches of the previous row. And again, we're not going to uh, skip any behind this post stitch. So we find that next stitch that hasn't been worked into yet, single crochet in that, single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, and then front post treble around the next stitch, two rows below again. So we always want to work our front post treble crochet stitches into a post stitch. So this is the one we worked into previously, so we're gonna jump over to this one. And again, just go around there and work it on, off, and up. Now, you want to have worked a total, keep working this repeat, you want to have worked a total of five front post treble crochet stitches before we need to look at a change in our directions. So let's go ahead and do that a couple more times. Move that aside, work three single crochets, one, two, three, then again, front post treble around the next post stitch, two rows below. Now we're starting to work off a little to the other side, that's okay, just follow the path. Oops, <laughs> let me try that again. There we go, go around that next post stitch. So that's four of them, so we're going to pull that aside again, go in the next three single, the next three stitches rather with single crochets, two, and three, and then yarn over twice for our next front post treble, and this time we're gonna have to reach all the way over here. And you'll notice this is another one of those pairs of post stitches. So this time we want to go around that front one, or rather the first one, excuse me, because of course that's the next one in line. 
So I'm just going to work that off right there, like so. And you can see now we've made five of our front post treble crochets. Okay, so when we go back to our instructions after we've made those five, then we see we do one little thing different here. We need to skip the next stitch of the previous round. So as before, when we pull that aside and, aside rather, and start working right into that next stitch, in this case, we're going to skip it, go to the next stitch after that, and from there, we can begin our repeat that we're going to do again for another five times. We make three single crochets. So there's one, two, three, and then we front post treble crochet around the next post stitch, two rows below. Now, again, we're starting our repeat, so again, we find ourselves working into the second of a pair of post stitches. So that's, again, just a great way to make sure that you're on track and not missing any stitches. So we'll work that one on up. And then, of course, it's time again to pull it aside and make sure we go into the next stitch for our three single crochets, and we repeat that again all the way around. When we've repeated this sequence twice, there will be two stitches left at the very end of the round. So let's keep making that sequence and I will see you close to the end of round five. All right, so here I am at nearly the end of round five. I've made 15 post stitches total with single, three single crochets worked in between each one. Now, when we get to the end of the round here, we're not quite done after that last post stitch, which of course should have been worked into that first of that pair right there that we started working in the second one, we end up in that first one. Now, if I move the stitch aside, you can see there's that stitch right there, but we end our repeat by skipping it again, remember? We always have that skipped one there at the end of our repeat, so that means we've got two stitches left of the round, so we're just going to single crochet in each of those, and then when we join to that first single crochet we made, of course, that puts us right back with three single crochets in between those two post stitches, which maintains our stitch pattern around. So that's the end of round five, and you should now have 60 stitches in the round. And for the teen adult small size, that's going to be our same stitch count for the rest of the hat until we get to the brim. So after this, from round six on, there will be 60 stitches per round. To begin row six, we're going to start again with a chainless starting double crochet in the very first stitch, or again, whatever double crochet substitute you would like to use. After that, we're simply going to double crochet in each remaining stitch around. So again, however you like to start your round of double crochets is fine. Just for round six, make sure you double crochet in every stitch around. Again, it doesn't matter if it's a single crochet or a post stitch, you just work under those top two loops. So at the end of round six, when you've got 60 double crochets made, you'll join, and then we can begin round seven together. Okay, so at the end of round six, we should have our 60 double crochets. We're joined and ready to begin round seven. In round seven, we're finally going to begin making our diamond pattern. We're going to start with a chain one and then single crochet in the first three stitches. So one, two, and three. Then we're going to work a front post treble crochet two together around the first two post stitches two rows below. So again, we're just going to work right in front of those double crochets. We're going to start wrapping our yarn twice on the hook, find that first post stitch down there, that very first one we made, go around that one, and we're going to work our front post trebles just as we've been doing before, but we're going to stop right here when we have two loops left on the hook. Then we're going to yarn over again twice, find the very next post stitch two rows below, and go around that one. And we keep working it off until we have three loops left on the hook, then we yarn over and pull through all three to finish off our stitch. That's our first front post treble crochet two together. Then we're going to skip the next stitch of the previous round right there, and we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches. We skip the one behind the front post treble crochet two together because we do not want to increase anymore. We want to stick with 60 stitches in this round. So we need to skip that one behind there because we've got this stitch right here. So after we make three single crochets, then we do the front post treble crochet two together again. We yarn over twice. We're going to come back to the same one that we finished our last front post treble crochet two together in. This one right here, go around it again, 
Again, just like before, when there's already one in there, you just go right below it. Make our front post treble crochet, but again, stop when there's two loops left on the hook. Let me straighten that out. There we go. Like so. Then we yarn over again twice, find the next post stitch, two rows below, and go around that one. And again, work it off until there are three loops left on the hook. Then we yarn over and go through all three, like so. Make sure you skip the one behind that stitch and single crochet in the next three. And that is our basic pattern for row seven. Three single crochets followed by the front post treble, treble crochet, two together. So we just wanna make sure that the first leg always goes into the same one that the last leg of the previous stitch was worked into. And you can see that starts creating the points that will help us make our triangles or our diamond shapes, I should say. They start as triangles sort of, but they'll become diamonds. So I'm gonna continue doing that all the way around, just working evenly. Always skip the one behind the front post, treble crochet two together. And I will see you right here when we get to the other end of round seven. Okay, so here I am almost at the end of round seven. You can see there's one stitch left in the previous round and I haven't made that last front post treble crochet two together. I just wanted to demonstrate this one because it is just that little bit different. We're going to yarn over and start it the same way. Yarn over twice, go around the previous post stitch down there. Work that off until you've got two loops left. And then to finish this off, we'll yarn over and now we're going to go around that very first one. That one that's left that we started our first front post treble crochet two together in we're going to finish off by going around that one one more time. Again, you can just go right underneath the previous post stitch. And then of course, we skip that stitch right there, that very last one, and we join to the first single crochet made with our slip stitch, and that's it for round seven. Again, it should have 60 stitches total. For round eight, we're just going to repeat round six, which as you may recall, was just a double crochet in each stitch around. Again, 60 stitches total. So I'll see you at the end of round eight so that we can work round nine together. All right, so here I am at the end of round eight. It's just a simple round of double crochet, one in each stitch, but you can get a good look at how the hat looks so far. It's curving down a little bit into that hat shape and we've got our points created right there. So now we're going to make round nine. And if this is going to be another single crochet and front post treble crochet two together row, we get to make our first round of finished diamonds here. We're going to start with a chain one, go right back in that first stitch with a single crochet, like so. And then we are going to front post treble crochet two together around the last and first front post treble crochet two together stitches, two stitches, or excuse me, two rows below. Again, a mouthful, but actually easier done than said. So I'm going to yarn over twice again for that first one. And here I'm going to come over to that last one made that top of the very last one right here below. So it's a little off to the side. We wanna come over there and we want to go around both of those legs because that's all really one stitch. So we wanna slip our hook behind that first leg of that post stitch and the second one. We can bring it right up to the top, but that way we can make sure we're getting around the entire stitch. So we yarn over, pull up our loop, start working it off until there are two loops left again on the hook, just as before. Yarn over twice again and then jump over to this next one. And again, just go right under both of those legs and then you can pull your hook up to the top of the stitch before you yarn over and pull it through and then finish it off until you've got three loops left on the hook. And then of course yarn over and pull through all three again. Then of course we skip the stitch, the next stitch in the previous row there. So we don't increase and work three single crochets again. So it's a very similar to that previous round. This time, of course, and from here on out through the rest of the hat, rather than going around individual front post stitches, we'll be going around the tops of these decreases. So you always wanna make sure from here on out in the hat, anytime you work one of those stitches that you go under both legs of the stitches that you're working around two rows below. So let's do that together one more time. I've got my three stitches there, so we'll yarn over twice. And again, we're going to round, go around this previous one here that we did before. I'll just again go under both legs Pull up my loop, yarn over, pull through two and pull through two. Then I will yarn over twice again, come on over here to the next one, go under both legs, pull up that loop, yarn over and pull through two, pull through two, and with three loops left on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And that's our basic repeat. So as we work this one around, you can see by working just one single crochet, it offset it to create that diamond shape. 
So then we get back around and we work that last set, that last front post treble crochet there over this last set of diamond here. Then we'll have two single crochets left to work into and join for that third one. So I'll see you when we get right back around there in round nine. All right, so here I am just about at the end of round nine and I wanted to finish it off with you again. I've got my three single crochets made here and I'm ready for my last front post treble crochet two together. So I'll yarn over twice and come back to this previous one just as I've been doing. Work that off until I have two loops left on the hook. Yarn over twice again and come over to remember that very first one we worked around at the beginning. That's where we wanna finish it off to complete our diamond shapes and work our front post treble off there like so. Then when we skip the stitch behind it, we've got two stitches left in that previous round for those two single crochets right there. So then you can join to the top of that first single crochet you made. And again, you've got 60 stitches. Now we've actually made all the rounds that we need for our repeat. Our repeat is rounds six through nine. So if you may remember, round six was that simple round of double crochet. Round seven was where we made our first part of the diamonds and of course this next time it will be completing these so again there we'd start with a three single crochets and that will be offset enough to complete these so again from here on out you want to make sure to work around both those legs go under both those legs with your hook so you can really get that great diamond look so you'll repeat rounds six through nine until round 17 for the beanie size or round 21 for the slightly longer slouchy version or you could do even more if you want an even longer hat after that, you'll go to the brim instructions, which are the same for both sizes, and it has its own tutorial. Now, I'll demonstrate just a little bit of you, excuse me, a little bit for you right here, but again, go to the link in the description if you need a fuller tutorial for the brim. The technique uh, is the same. Stitch counts, of course, just change depending on how wide a brim you want. So while I started with a chain eight, if you wanted a wider brim or a more narrow brim, you can alter that number to suit yourself. I've got one, two, three, four, five chains here made. So let me make three more, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to start by skipping the chain closest to the hook and working into the back loop only. So if we turn our work here, because with the brim, we're going to be working little short rows. I'm going to go into the loop furthest away from me on the top V there for a single crochet and then do that on down the chain. So there's two and we skip that first chain. So we should have seven of these total. There's three. Just take your time. This first row is a little fiddly. Four, five, six, and of course seven, that last one's gonna be right down here, right by that last row we made. There we go. So with seven single crochets made, what we want to do is single crochet in the next two stitches of the last round of the hat. So we join to this one, so we're gonna not work in that one, we're gonna come over to this next one, pull up a loop there, go into the one after that, pull up a loop, three loops left on the hook, we yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Now at this point, I like to give this stitch a little tug back on the working yarn. It really tightens up the stitch and makes it quite short, but that is what we want for this particular hat. So while I didn't pull back on the loop for my other single crochet stitches, on the single crochet two together, I find that making that stitch really tight really benefits the look of the stitch overall. So to begin row two of the brim, we're going to turn and work back the other way. So it'd be like working from the inside of the hat at this point. We're going to skip that single crochet two together we just made and we're not going to chain. We're just going to instead start working back loop only single crochets in those seven single crochets we made previously. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and finally seven. There we go, that last one can wanna hide, but if you want to use a stitch marker in that last stitch to help you find it, uh, that can be really helpful too. Then we're ready to begin row three, which we do chain one for. Turn to work back the other way here, and again, back loop only single crochet in those seven stitches across. So we don't work into that turning chain but we make seven single crochets on across until we get down to the other end here. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
more. I'm gonna try and get centered up a little bit here. Hat's getting big. <laughs> Five, six, and seven. Now that seventh one right there, again, can be difficult to find because we just sort of skipped over. We don't have a chaining, or excuse me, a training chain or anything there, but you just wanna look for that very last one hiding out there. Get your hook in there in that back loop only and make your single crochet. Then again, you're ready to find the next two stitches of the hat, that last round of the hat. So the next one here, go in and pull up a loop and go to the next one, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three and tighten it right down. And that's basically the repeat for the brim of the hat. You just keep repeating uh, the previous two rows here, coming down and then working back and coming down, working up until you've worked all the way around the hat. And then you can sew the first and last rows together and you've got this great stretchy brim. So now let's take a look at how to make the adult large 22 to 24 inch size. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate how to make the first few rounds of the adult large 22 to 24 inch size. This one starts the exact same way with a magic circle. And again, I like to use a chainless starting double crochet for my first double crochet of the round, but however you want to get that in there is up to you. The point is at the end of round one to have 16 double crochets worked into the ring. So I will make a chainless starting double crochet for the first one of mine, like so. And then I'm going to make 15 more right back into that ring. And as I mentioned in the previous size, you want to make sure to go under both the ring around your finger and this tail. If you need a closer look at anything I've shown here uh, that has its own tutorial like the magic circle or the chainless starting double crochet, again, those are at the link in the description. So I'm going to continue making my double crochets. Here we go, I can pull it on off my finger until I've got 16 total stitches worked into the ring. So I will see you when I get to that point. Okay, so with 16 double crochets made into the ring, I can pull on that tail and it helps sometimes to stabilize that inner circle there because you kind of have to give it a little bit of a tug. But there we go, we've got a nice tight circle so my end is ready to be woven in later. So I'm just going to go ahead and join to that first double crochet made, however you wanted to make it. Could be the top of a chain three or the first double crochet if you started with the chain two, or in my case, the chainless starting double crochet. So now we've got 16 double crochets and we're ready to begin round two. For round two, we're going to work two double crochets in each stitch around. So again, however you like to begin that is up to you. So with two stitches in each of these 16 stitches, we'll have a total of 32 double crochets at the end of round two. So I'll see you when we get to the end of round two. All right, so here I am at the end of round two. I made two double crochets into each stitch of the previous round, so I have 32 double crochets total. To begin round three, I'm going to start with a chain one, and then I'm going to work two single crochets in that first stitch, the one we joined to. So there's one, two, then a front post double crochet around the next stitch. So I'll yarn over just once and find the post of the next stitch. So that's the body of the stitch down here. Go right around it with my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Then that is our repeat for this round. I simply find the next stitch over, put two single crochets in that stitch, one, two, and then front post double crochet around the next stitch. Because we're working two single crochets into the stitches in between the front post stitches, we'll have an increase. And at the end of round uh, three, yes, round three, we will have a total of 48 stitches. So keep working this pattern of two single crochets in the next stitch, followed by a front post double crochet around the next stitch, and I will see you at the end of round three. Okay, so here I am at the end of round three. I've got 48 stitches total. I worked a front post uh, double crochet around that last stitch there and then joined to the first single crochet made. So to begin round four, we are simply going to start again with a chainless starting double crochet or whatever double crochet substitute you prefer worked right into that first stitch. So let me get that worked off my hook here. There we are. And after that, we are going to double crochet again in that first stitch. So whichever method you prefer, get two double crochets worked into that very first stitch. Then we're going to double crochet in the next two stitches. One 
and two. And that right there is our repeat. Two double crochets in the next stitch. One, two, and a double crochet in each of the stitches after that. So we'll repeat that on a round so that we have 64 stitches at the end of round four. We'll just finish that off with a join to the first double crochet made and we'll be ready to begin round five together. So I'll see you when we get to that point. All right, so here I am at the end of round four. I have 64 double crochets made total and I've joined to the first double crochet I made. Now I wanna point out that at this point, the hat might seem a little wobbly in the size large. We've increased a lot of stitches in a short period of time. However, as we make the sides and this hat turns into a hat shape rather than a flat circle, that will pull the ends in, or the sides rather, in nicely. So don't worry too much about that right now. Let's go, go ahead and make round five together. We're going to start with a chain one and a single crochet in the first stitch, like so. And now we're going to work our first front post treble crochet two together, working around the last and first front post double crochet stitches made two rows below. So since we know this is our first stitch, if we come down here two rows below, we know this was the last one of those post stitches made two rows below. So we're going to work in front of the previous round and start with yarning over twice and go back to, like I said, to that last post stitch you made at the end of the round two rows below. So we go right around that post, yarn over, pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, like so. Stop when there are two loops left on the hook, yarn over twice again, find the next post stitch two rows below. You can use your fingers to help feel for it if you can't quite see it. There we are, and we go right around that post, yarn over and pull up our loop, and keep working those off two at a time until we have three loops left on the hook, like so. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that's our first front post treble crochet two together. We're going to skip the stitch behind it because I forgot to mention, there are 64 stitches in the previous round and there will be 64 stitches in each remaining round of this size until we get to the brim. So since we don't want to increase, we will skip the stitch behind the decrease we just made because of course that takes the place of that stitch and single crochet in the next three. So there's one, two, and three. Then we make our next front post treble crochet two together. And this time we're going to start by working the first leg around the same stitch as the last leg of the previous one of those. So we yarn over twice, come back over to that one right there, go around it again. You can just work that one right underneath the previous one. Work it off until you have two loops left on your hook. Yarn over twice, jump over to the next one down here. Go around that one, yarn over. Work it off until there are three loops left again, and yarn over and pull through all three, like so. Once again, skip the stitch behind it, and single crochet in the next three. So we're just going to continue that all the way around until we get close to the end there. So I will meet you when we get right back around to the end of round five. But you can see we started our great little triangle shapes here that will be turning into diamonds shortly. So I will see you at the end of round five. Okay, so here I am almost finished with round five. I've got three double, or excuse me, three single crochets made, one stitch left that I'll end up skipping because I have my last front post treble crochet two together to make. And I wanted to make that with you guys right now. So we're going to yarn over twice and I'm going to go over again that last post stitch that we finished our last pre, uh, decrease in. There we go. So we've got that one right there. And then when I yarn over again twice, I wanna finish up by going in the first one we worked around when we made the very first front post treble crochet two together <laughs> of the round. We went around this one down here, so that's where we wanna put the second leg of the very last one so that it completes the stitch pattern. When you've got three loops, of course, left on the hook, work that off. Again, skip that last stitch and join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. So that is round five, and you can see we've started our triangles together, and they're a little squished right now, but again, as we work, those will spread out a little bit and form the great hat shape. After this, rounds six through nine are the repeat that create the look of our hat, and those are identical to the adult small size, so I've already demonstrated those. The only difference between the small and the large is that with the large, instead of 60 stitches, we have 64 stitches around. So the stitch count is different, but otherwise, six through nine are exactly the same. 
And again, you'll work that repeat until round 17 if you want a closer fitting beanie or through round 21 if you want a sloucher, slouchier version or even further if you want a super slouchy hat. After that, again, the brim is identical to the previous size with a chain eight and worked back and forth. And again, it has its own tutorial. So you can flip back to see a little bit of that on the adult small when you watch round six through nine, or you can go to the tutorial specifically for this brim style that is linked at the link in the description. Okay, so here I've got the finished hat again. You can see it's a brim about this wide with that chain eight version. So if you want a narrower brim again, you can adjust that or a wider brim, whatever you prefer. And then of course, when it's all done, if you want to add the snap on pom pom, let me get my fingers in there. It is a nice secure snap. I will tell you what, there we go. I've just sewn that on the snap portion with matching thread. And then of course I can pop that off to put it in the wash or to change colors if I desire. So that's the basics of the diamond crochet hat. I hope you've enjoyed this, enjoyed this tutorial and that it helps you make your own. And also don't forget to check out the matching cowl. Again, follow the link in the description for everything you need to make this pattern in either size and in either length. Thank you to Red Heart Yarn and Laurel Hill for providing the materials for this pattern. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.